So this question starts off by providing us with a system of equations. The question says, in the given system of equations, A is a constant, so that value right there. The graphs of the equations in the given system intersect at exactly one point, so that's very important. Why is that important? Well, that catches my eye because this first equation is actually a quadratic equation, which means it's going to be a parabola. And then the second equation is a linear equation, which means it's going to be a line. How does a line intersect a parabola at only one, at only one point? Well, it could intersect horizontally and touch just the vertex like that. But this is not going to be a horizontal line because we have a slope, right? We have a 3x for our slope there. Which means that our line is going to be tangent to our um, parabola in some way. So maybe it looks something like this, and it touches you know, some point along the edge there um, so that we still have our up 3 over 1 for our slope. Um, but we need to figure out where that point is. Now, the other issue that I notice here is that typically when I'm solving an a system of equations, I just have x and y. Here I have y, x, and a, right? So I have technically three unknown things in only two equations. And I know that I just can't solve. I can't solve for three unknowns if I only have two equations. So the question tells me that they intersect at one point, And the question basically is asking for the value of x. I think this is a setup for me to just use my graphing calculator. I'm going to make this question as visual as possible because, again, I don't know what kind of math to do that would allow me to solve for x given that I don't know what a is and I don't know what y is, right? When I have a system of equations, I like to use things like elimination and substitution. Neither of those will deal with having three unknowns. So instead, I'm going to use my graphing calculator. So I'm going to graph this first equation here. And, you know, you can't see the graph, but it's going to look, let me open it back up over here on my other screen. It's going to look something like this. That's what that graph will look like. And then the second equation is where I'm going to need to use a strategy called plug-in answers, where I'm going to try the x value answer choices from our answer choices and then see what that causes a to equal. And then from there, determine which one of these answer choices leads us to an a value that leads us to a second equation here that only crosses or touches this parabola in one place. So to do that, now that we have a visual of what that parabola looks like, I'm going to set up my first equation, y equals 2, make the parentheses pretty large so I can just replace it with separate numbers in the future here, plus 64. And my second equation is y equals 3, parentheses, and then plus a. So when I try answer choice a, I put a negative 8 in here for each of these. Again, best thing to do is to go to your calculator. It'll, take, it'll make this question take much less time than the video will take. Um, but when I multiply 2 times negative 8 squared, well, negative 8 squared is 64 times 2 is 128. So I have 128 there. Then negative 21 times negative 8 is negative, I'm sorry, positive 168. So I add 168 to that. And then I add 64. So all of this would equal 360. So I'd have like y equals 360. And here, when I put that same negative 8 in, I get negative 24 plus a. But because I know that at the point of intersection, my y values have to be the same, then I know that this negative 24 plus a has to equal my 360, which means that a has to be positive 384. So when I go to my calculator, I'm going to plug in this equation here, the first one. And then the second equation, I'm going to plug in y equals 3x plus 384. So if you have your graphing calculator, plug those in, and you will see that those two equations, um, you will not get a single point of intersection. You will get two points of intersection. And that's the reason why choice A is not good. All right. So now erasing that negative 8, I can basically try the exact same thing with pa or negative 6. Again, if you do the math here, 
you'll find that also it does not intersect only once. Let's just do the math really quickly. This is 72, this is 126 plus 64. So calculator, 72 plus 126 plus 64 is equal to 262. And again, this has to be also equal to 262 because the y values have to be the same at the point of intersection. So this would be 280, so a would equal 280. So again, for this one, again, you plug in the original equation, which you should already have saved in your graphing calculator. And then you also graph this second equation, but instead of a, you're gonna replace a with 280. And what you'll see is that that also intersects the parabola two times. So that's why B is gone. And then choice C, we re replace this with positive six. And what we get there <clears throat> is still our 72 here. This becomes negative 126, <coughs> excuse me, plus 64. So to the calculator. 72 minus 126 plus 64, I get 10. So this is y equals 10. <coughs> this is also a 6. So I have 18 plus a equals 10, which means a equals negative 8. So again, I go back. I replace that second equation with the a equally negative 8. And what you'll see here is that you do, in fact, have a single point of intersection. It looks kind of like this where that's our line from our second equation. And this, of course, is our parabola from the first equation. So this video is a pretty long video, much longer than what I like these to be. And this question takes a bit more time, right? So this may be a question that you, if you're running out of time, you decide not to do. If anyone has a much faster way to solve this question than what I am currently thinking of on my first go around with this question, please do let me know in the comments. If it is much faster than this, then I will just post another video with your suggestions and make sure to shout you out. Um, again, we are a community here to help each other out. My first thought may not always be the fastest method. The, whole, the goal is that I give you a way to think about questions, especially the more difficult ones. Um, that you may not have thought about before. So using our graphing calculator is useful, except you can graph this to start, but you cannot graph that because it has the A involved. So then we combine that with plug-in answers, which is also a bit weird because our answer choices are all X values, which means we start off by plugging them into the first equation just to even know what A should be based upon the fact that we know that our Y values should be equal to each other. Right, so it is kind of a complicated web, a circular logic um, that's going on here. But it does work out. It does make sense. And choice C is the best answer. It does work out visually when you graph it. You can also, of course, you know, test that out. If you don't trust me, right, you can just <clears throat> graph both of these things um, without trying all the other options. And you'll see that there's a single point of intersection.